Imagine having an AI agent that could browse websites, find specific products, and even automate tasks for you all on your own computer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use WebRover, which is a powerful self-hosted AI agent that works seamlessly with N8N to automate just about anything. Now, really quick, I just wanted to showcase how this actually works and give you guys a quick demo how this browser or the operator, whatever you want to call this agent, is going to run. So in N8N, what I'm going to say is I need you to book a flight for me through Google Flights. I'm trying to fly to Amsterdam on March 2nd and come back on the 14th. I would like you to find a flight from Charlotte, North Carolina, and then find the cheapest flight of them all and tell me the details of that flight. So I'm going to hit enter. We're seeing that it's going to run this HTTP request, which is then going to, in a second, prompt this Google window to come up and then on it's going to actually start searching. So we can see here that it's running the second HTTP request. And what this is doing, it's basically querying a search and calling the API. So it's actually using fast API in the back end, but it's searching Google flights all while I'm doing other things on my browser. And you'll notice that it will run a bit slowly, but you know, this is something that just was released i think literally last week so it will take a second so we should see it's going to find charlotte okay that's perfect and next up it should be finding in just a second amsterdam as the destination so we'll see how that comes up so it is finding the amsterdam as the destination now let's see if it gets the departure and the return correctly so we're looking for march 2nd so we'll see if it's able to choose that so it actually shows that it's unavailable right now so i don't think this is going to work properly so it's probably going to auto correct to something else i would imagine well it is looking like it's running properly and it's going to use march 2nd as the return date we'll see if it can choose this properly okay well i mean seemingly it's working pretty well but you know how that's actually working right there is every single time that this is running it's using ocr to extract the entire page and then from there it's using some agentic features to determine which action is going to be the best and most likely outcome to achieve end goal so it's showing right here of this being the cheapest flight so i could actually scroll down it found the cheapest flight and and it's providing me the details from it. So let's see if it's actually finished up. Okay, so it's still executing. So we'll give it just a few seconds to do whatever it's trying to do. So it looks like it's just finding other options. So it might be trying to open this other flight from 105 to 11 p.m. Again, it might take a second. So I'm going to scroll down manually just to see everything. But okay, I think it's all done now. So it hasn't done an action in a few seconds. So it looks like everything is all finished up in here. I mean, we only have two nodes, but we can see here that we have all the thoughts. So these are all the actions and all the thoughts that this agent is taking. So the first thing being a thought right here, I need to start by searching for Google flights to begin the process of booking a flight. So, I mean, this is pretty crazy. I need to click on the link that will take me to Google flights to start searching for flights from Charlotte to Amsterdam. Okay. I need to enter the departure city, Charlotte, North Carolina, where from we'll see. So this is very extensive. I need to enter the departure and return dates for the flight search. So the departure date is March 2nd and the return date is March 14th. So it did get that correct and we'll see. But again, if you really want this to be pinpoint, you'll have to provide it with you know pretty spot on prompting so the cheapest flight available is the first flight is 595 and the second flight is 610 dollars which it was correct on that so click on the link to access this okay so more or less we got the information that we were looking for and honestly this is some pretty crazy stuff and i mean i'm going to be showing you how you can run this for a completely free way in running it on n8n but yeah so pretty crazy stuff so stick around because by the end of this video you'll know exactly how to set up web rover on your computer integrate it with N8N and even use it to do just about any task that you're looking for it to handle. But really quick, I wanted to mention that if you are a business owner looking to implement AI agents and other custom AI solutions into your company to increase your bottom line, then check out the link down below to apply to work with us. And if you're looking to grow and scale your own AI agency, my partner and I are opening up three more spots to work directly one-on-one -on -one with us where we guarantee to start landing you clients and get you on the right track to becoming a successful AI consultant. You can check that out with the link down below in the description as well now getting into actually how you can start building this out for yourself so we can see right here that we also have a front end you know something aside from just hosting it on n8n where in n8n we're just running a couple different http requests and in web rover this is just going to be the actual front end so this is going to be the same thing as me entering into the chat here so booking a flight i could put that in right here just as easily but if you want to run this autonomously so if i wanted this i could run this on a schedule to you know if i were to pull up a crone or they actually call it 
with something different. So if I were to just run this on a schedule trigger, you know, I could run this every single Monday at a specific time if I wanted it to run a specific report or do some specific research and, you know, run that headless browser, then I could do so autonomously. So that's why we would host it on N8N as opposed to just running it on this front end of Web Rover. Now, I'll put the GitHub for this down below in the description where you can check out the link, some demos and all the different features of what this really comprises of. But really the only thing that you're going to be focusing on is this back end setup right here and also the front end setup if you cared to use this at all. Aside from that, we are also going to be using Docker and Docker is where we're going to be hosting N8N because we can't just use this on the cloud to run Web Rover. We have to actually run it on our local computer similarly to Web Rover. Now, the first thing that we're actually going to be doing is running up a local terminal. Now you can use your computer's terminal or you could do what I'm about to do and just run this on cursor. So I'm used to just using cursor for really anything. So I'm just going to be building this out on here. Now, don't be afraid because you're not going to have to know how to do any code. All you're doing is just copying and pasting things into cursor or your local terminal, whichever one. First thing you want to do, once you open up cursor, you'll likely have to press command J to actually open up your terminal right here and you'll be prompted with all these different things. So go ahead and start a new project and open up your terminal. Now we have a backend and we have a front end. So the system is, it's going to be contingent on the back end running if you want to use n8n so you won't need to have the front end but in any case first thing we'll do is i'm going to come over to github and if i scroll up we're going to the back end setup now we're going to have to start off cloning the repository so if you just copy this over if we paste it in i'm not so sure that it's going to work now because i've already done everything here so i'm going to first shut down my application and you can see that i'm already in the proper directory but if i back out i'm going to type git clone it's going to clone this into my terminal but we can see here that i'm going to run into some issues because I've already set this up prior. Next up, you want to create a virtual environment. So once that is all set up, and also if you have any issues at all, just run this into ChatGPT or maybe Claude, and it'll be able to troubleshoot any of these issues for you. Yeah, so it's relatively straightforward. But anyways, next what you want to do is create a virtual environment. So just copy this over and you want to paste it into your terminal. So you'll be running this. It's not going to do anything for me again. And then we're going to install the dependencies. So copy this, and then you also set up your environment variables so you'll copy this but and next up you're going to have to set up your environment variables so you will need an OpenAI api key so just go to OpenAI. you will go into your settings let's see really quick so if i go to my settings if i go to api keys you'll just create a brand new secret key you'll copy that and you will paste that into your literally right here next up you're also going to have to be using langchain now langchain it can get a little bit expensive like i think i've already spent around 13 dollars using this system so far but within langchain all you do is just sign up for an account. It'll be free right away. But once you do, you will have to create an API key. Let's see here if I can show you really quick. This goes to settings. Well, I have my API keys here, right here. But if you try to start a new project, it's going to show you everything that you're going to be needing. Let's just try creating a new project right now. I'll go to tracing projects. I'll go to brand new one. And we can see here, what you'll do is just generate an API key and then you'll copy your project name. So I can name this whatever I want, like operator cheap version. I don't know, something like that. And then all you will do is you're just copying it and pasting it into right here, or I'm sorry, right here. And up here is where your API key is going. So just follow the directions there and you'll be all good. Next up, you'll have to actually run the back end. So if you just copy this over, I'm going to try running this myself right now. So I'm going to paste that and it's saying it's going to start the process. So I'm hosting it on 127.0.0. So it says I'm hosting it at this address and you know, I can open this up, but it's not really going to show anything. I mean, I suppose for demo purposes, I will show you, you know, it's just going to say details not found. Now that we have this set up, it will run in N8N so long as you have it hosted properly. So that kind of leads me to the next point, which how can we actually start hosting this? Well, we're going to be using Docker for this. So if I come over, I'm using the Docker desktop. And you know, if you're familiar with running the code in your terminal to locally host Docker and set up containers in local images, that and feel free to do it like that. But our goal here is just setting up a port of 5678. So if you're going to Docker for the first time, you want to go for images or go into images. So if you are running this desktop app for the first time, what you'll do is just come into images. If you search for brand new images, go to N8NIO. I believe it's this one right here. And if you pull and run this, then it'll look something like this. And you don't have to go into your container and also create one. But I have a tutorial for how to run Docker in N8N on my free school community 
community. So join that if you're interested in checking out how you can actually use Docker, but there's a lot of different ways that you can um, host this on various ports. But this is the way that I prefer to do it for this build. So, you know, feel free to copy my way or go about a completely different direction. But, you know, this is more so for showing you guys how Web Rover is actually working, what's going on, as opposed to a full in-depth tutorial. But now that we have this backend actually set up, now what we want to do is try to run the front end. So you're going to create a brand new terminal. So if you just click on new terminal, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm actually going to pause my front end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into GitHub. And if I go to the front end, all they have is three different steps. So as long as your back end is running properly, all you have to do is type in CD front end, NPM install, and then NPM run developer or dev for short. So I'm going to try running that right now. We'll see what we get. So it's saying that it's running on localhost 3000. So I'm going to to open this up and I'll see if this is even working properly. Okay, so the front end is working and this is what the UI actually looks like. So, you know, if this is going to be a better method than actually hosting this on N8N, then feel free to go about this. And the first thing that you'll notice when you first open this up is it's going to open this Google tab. So this is where how this browser is going to be running every single time. It's called Chromium. Now within here, we could say anything like go to my website, www.reprise.ai.us and in tell me what the website is about. Now, this is relatively new. I think it just came out last week. So it is running a bit slowly, but in any case, we can go into here and we will see how it is running. So it's going to open up the Google search and it's going to just type in, you know, I can't even show you, I'm not using any of my hands. It's typing in my website. It's going to pull up the, the proper domain that I am asking you for. And you can see it's landed on my website. So I'm not going to scroll down or anything, but I'm sure it will in just a second. You know, the end goal is for it to provide me some information about my website. But in theory, you could have this do a plethora of different things. So if you wanted this to go to Uber Eats and place an order for you, I mean, granted, you would have to provide it with your address. So if you're comfortable doing that, then just provide it with your address and it'll be able to, you know, really place any orders for you. So if you wanted to go to Taco Bell and click on that and order you two tacos, then by all means, it can absolutely do that. So if I come back into here, we can see that it's still running or thinking, but it's saying the web page appears to be the homepage of Reprise AI with navigation options like solutions. So it is providing me with some details about the website. Let's see here. So it's not exactly going through the website and providing me some specific details. So I could probably be prompting it a little bit better. Let's see here. I do have another use case that I want to show off for something like this, but let's actually try using that within N8N. So within N8N, once you host this locally on Docker, then what you can do is, you know, you can just come into your local host and I've set up a couple different HTTP requests. So Web Rover, it's run on fast API. So I will search this really quick. So I'm going to pull up the documentation on the API. So we will see that once this uh, actually opens, we have these different APIs that we could actually call. So we have post, get, and those are actually the only ones, but there's different types of uh, posts. So we have the query agent, the cleanup browser, and even the setup browser. So we can open these up and we could see how how we can actually call these properly. So in theory, all we will have to do in N8N is just setting up an HTTP request to call these. What I've done here, and feel free to copy this, the post is going to be the method. The URL endpoint is going to be host.docker.internal colon 8000 slash setup dash browser. And the body content type is JSON. So I'm getting all this information from this uh, fast API for the most part. So I'm gonna back out. And we can even see that there's some schemas right here, but coming back into here, within the JSON, we're just providing it with the URL. So we want it to to first search through google.com. So this is where it's going to be running its headless browser. So anytime this runs, it's going to open up that window of Google. Okay, so this is where it's actually going to set up the browser. Next up, we actually have to query something. So if we want to prompt our agent to, you know, the headless browser to start doing something, then we have to query that. The only thing that we're changing right here, I believe is we're adding a backslash of query. And then now within the body parameters, we're just providing the query and we're going to say, we're just dragging over the chat message, but you know, you could, this is going to look relatively different for you and where and how you would like this to be set up. So for demo sake, I'm just using a chat message and I'm just dragging this into my body parameter. Now, I also included a pretty high timeout, but you know, I mean, we could even probably delete this because I think the default, can't remember exactly what it was. I think the default was, I don't know, maybe like 300 seconds or something like that or 3000, I don't know. But I think the default's totally fine. So I'm not going to include any more timeouts. Now, in theory, all we have to do is we wanted to open up this chat. What I'm going to say is I need you to go 
to Home Depot website and I need you to find this product. So a 24 inch by eight foot by 0.118 inches of a polycarbonate roof panel in clear color. So I'm going to search this. And I mean, I could have even added something like I need you to find the price of it and also the description. But in any case, first thing you're going to do, it's going to open up this browser. So it's in Google right now. And again, if we wanted this to run on Bing or something like that, then absolutely we can do that. I mean, I could even provide it with a website like uh, Home Depot and set that right here and have that be the default of what it's going to be prompting. But I'm just going to have it always come into Google. Now you can see that it just searched up this product and it's going to recognize that this is from Home Depot. So in a second, it should open this up as it is right now. And you know, we can see right here, it's providing pretty much the entirety of the product. So an extra step that we probably should have added is asking this agent to return the description about it. So let's say I wanted it to find maybe some reviews. So it would have to scroll down the page and provide some reviews. And this is something that it could absolutely do. For some reason, it keeps running this request multiple times. So, you know, this really comes down to being very particular within your prompt and telling it exactly what you need it to do. So if there's captures, you know, it's probably best going to say, hey, I need you to run through these captures because right now it's just keeping rinsing and repeating. But in any case, that's really how you run this system. Um, I really just want to put together a super quick tutorial, you know, just give you a high level insight as to how this can run. So I'm actually going to pause this. But yeah, there's a bunch of other ways that you can kind of run ChatGPT's operator. So there's another one called, I believe it is Web UI. So if we come into Web UI, we search that on GitHub. That's another alternative to using this. So I would check this one out as well. And you can see which one's going to work for you better. You know, if you need to run an API, I'm not exactly sure that you'd be able to use this within an NN, but what I am showing you Web Rover as seen in the demo, this obviously will be able to run an NN and you can run this as an agent. So you can attach an agent to this as well. There's a lot you can actually do with it, but I'll allow you guys to play around with this yourself. And, you know, of course, send me over what you guys are building. So I would love to see and be inspired by what you guys are building. But in any case, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. And of course, I'll see you in the next one.